All right, so I'm going to be going through a walkthrough of the uh, convection gizmo assignment. So to start how to find this assignment in the week 24 folder at home assignment, and I'm doing the convection gizmo. If you're looking for the conduction gizmo, I posted another video which should be attached to this assignment. So click on this assignment and look for the attached video of me going through the conduction gizmo. But I'm going to get started on the convection gizmo here. All right, so my document, edit. All right, so this is what you should be looking at. Uh, following the directions is important here. This, uh, these directions here are very, very, very important. Uh, so clicking the link above right here, boom, that will take you to the simulation. Make sure it's the conduction and convection in the title, okay? There's another heat uh, by conduction, which is the other assignment. So make sure when you click on it, you have these two uh, flasks that are upside down with a metal in the middle. All right, so when I click on that, Make sure you log in. And this is what you should be looking at. Okay. So if you're there in the right place, you should see this right here with the two bottles upside down. All right. So again, um, and following instructions is very important. Um, the text in blue represents things that you need to interact with the gizmo in order to <coughs> Uh, answer the question or just kind of be in the right place in general. And also another reminder about this video is that um, I'm not going to be going through any of the answer or many of the answers. I might give a couple, but um, I'm going to stay away from giving many of the answers out because I, that's the whole point of the assignment is to get you to try these yourself and get your answers on your own. Uh, I'm going to give a few, but not many. So this is not meant to be one where you get the answers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, in here, you have the conduction and convection gizmo. All right, so you're gonna select copper and then solid chunk from the drop-down list. And then it says, make sure you use the sliders to make one flask hotter than the other. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select copper, which is already selected. All right, so not hollow pipe, but I'm going to click solid chunk. I'm gonna make sure one is hotter than the other. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna move this all the way up. And this one all the way down, just to show that they're opposite. One's hotter than the other. Okay, then it says hit play and what happens. So I'll go ahead and hit play. All right, and you'll notice that um, the time is moving and the temperatures are changing. So write down what you need here. All right, so what's happening? Tell me that here. All right, so then you're going to do what it says. It says select the data tab and look at the graph. What do the blue and yellow curve represent? So up here at the top, you have an experiment tab and a data tab. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the data and you should see two lines. Now this might not look like anything, but if you use these uh, zoom functions over here, you can either zoom in to look at something more specific or zoom out to see the general trend of the graph. So the blue fluid and yellow fluid, that's what these lines represent. You get the blue and blue and the yellow and yellow. So if you go back to the experiment, you can see the blue is on top and the yellow is on bottom. So what do these curves represent? Put that in there. And then what is the final temperature of the top and the bottom flask? So when these stop moving, so you see how even though my time's going up, the temperature hasn't changed. That's the final temperature. That's what you'll record here. So the purpose of this was to show you that <coughs> We'll go ahead and pause it. Um, 
how the temperatures change that you can select different copper chunks or hollow tubes. You can change the initial starting temperature and to find the data chart and then go in and out on the data chart. That's the point. On the data chart, you have time in seconds on the bottom and temperature in Celsius on the y-axis moving up and down. All right, so now we're going to get into convection here. So it says click reset, select glass and hollow pipe in the drop downs. I'm do that. I'm going to go to experiment. I'm going to hit the reset button. I'm going to select glass and hollow pipe. So what it says is, after I've done that, convection is a transfer of heat by the movement of matter. In what situation does convection work the best? That's what we're trying to understand. So the hollow pipe allows water in each flask to move around and mix. Try several experiments with different temperatures on the top and bottom flasks. So it's this is important right here. It says try several, which means you're going to have to do that on your own. And you're going to want to change the temperatures in the top and the bottom flask. So, um, all right. So if I want to start, maybe start with the temperatures. Let's see. Like, let's do 20 and 50. Okay, so that's what happened there. The two um, tubes eventually became the same. All right, you can also try again. And let's say, let's do something like this. All right. So notice the time that it's taking for these to completely mix. And you should know from first grade art class that yellow and blue make green. So that's why the solutions turn green. So I'm gonna now try them with the temperatures as high as I can get them. So you should notice something interesting here. So do you notice what's happening to the green now? All right, it's going slower. Let's see if I... All right, so this is me running a few experiments. So the initial temperature, the one on the top is hot, one on the bottom is now cold. This is interesting too. So you should notice some things change, all right? You should notice that when one temp when the temperature on top, all right, is high and the low on the bottom, it's not moving. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. You need to do and play around with this to figure out what's going on. So maybe try one where the temperature on top is hotter than the one on the bottom. And then maybe switch that around and the one on the bottom is hotter than the top. And then maybe try one where they're almost the same. So try that and keep going back and forth. So what do you see? So you need to describe what you're seeing as far as the... <clears throat> Uh, beakers go and the, the liquid moving in and out of the flasks. What color does it turn? That's what I'm looking for. How does the color show when the convection is taking place? All right. So like I said, when we're at, when blue and yellow mix, it makes green. So it means the water is mixing. So now you're going to make a hypothesis. Why do you think water mixes quickly in some cases, while other times it mixes slowly? So we saw that 
up here. So what conditions did it mix fast? And what conditions does it mix slow? That's what you're going to be looking for here. So what did you do to the top and the bottom to make it mix fast? What did you do to the top and the bottom to make it mix slow? Like I said, you're going to have to try this several times in order to figure that out. So don't just try like twice and then call it quits. You're not going to find it. You need to try. I don't know. I did at least five different experiments there real quick. And you're going to need to do that many as well. So don't think this is going to come just, you know, randomly moving stuff around. So you're going to need to do several experiments. All right. So now we're going to test. <clears throat> So, predict the results of each experiment, writing fast or slow in the predictions, and then test those predictions on the gizmo. So, for example, um, it says, so you're going to write fast, or you're going to write slow. I can, I'll, I'll do this first one. Do you predict that it's going to move fast or slow? So, let's say I write fast here and slow here. Again, that's a prediction. Does not have to be right. What does have to be right is this column here. So when you do the top flask initial temperature at 95, bottom flask initial temperature 5. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set that here. So 95 on the top. It might be easier just to type them in as well. Like, now again, is this moving fast or is it moving slow? This one is moving very slow. So with that in mind, I'm going to write slow. All right, so now you're going to look at how do the positions of hot and cold affect the speed of convection? So how did positioning the hot on top and cold on bottom, or the cold on top and the hot on bottom, how did those affect the, the switching of the temperature? How, so how did those affect the speed at which the convection occurred? So you might want to look at how long it took for them to mix. So keep an eye on this time. Maybe notice that one took longer than the other. All right, and then draw a conclusion. So does hot water rise or sink? And then explain using this stuff here. So you've got the explanation in the previous questions. You need to use that in this answer. Now, this one, I'm going to be putting a lot of weight on as far as grading goes. If you give me a one word or less than one sentence answer here, I'm going to mark it wrong. I'm not even going to read it. So make sure that you do a good job explaining here because explaining will tell me whether you learned anything or not. And what I mean by that is if you explain it and your explanation is wrong, then I know that you did put in the work, but you just didn't understand the concept. And I can work with that and I can address that when we get back to class. And that's my job. But what's a, a, putting a lazy answer in there is is not going to get you any work or any points. All right, so this is relatively short when you think about it because it's only the warm up and one section. All right, so if you are having problems with this, um, make sure you bring this up to me on Monday um, when we do our study halls or uh, message me on Schoology. And we can work out a time to set up where I can meet with you and we can go over this on a, a, a Google Meet. All right. If you don't understand this, please don't uh, just let it go. Talk to me and I'll be glad to walk you through it. Okay. So that takes us to the end of this assignment. Submit it when you are done. And remember, get at me if you have any questions.